Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Given here are the images from a tragedy that happened in 2007 at Minneapolis. This is a bridge collapse over the Mississippi River where 13 people were killed and 145 injured. One of the reasons behind the tragedy was overloading which developed excessive strain on the bridge and led to its collapse. If this overloading could be detected earlier, this misfortune could have been prevented. The topic of our video today is strain gauges. Strain gauges are electrical sensors that find their applications widely in the field of testing and measuring force. Strain gauge was invented by Edward E. Simmons and Arthur C. Rouge in 1938. The strain gauge consists of metal strips that are arranged in a zigzag manner on non-conductive material. The thickness of these metal strips is of the order of 3 to 5 micrometers. These thin metal strips are collectively called the measuring grid. For comparison, the width of one strand of spider web is about 3 to 8 micrometers. Yes, that thin. Strain gauges are pasted onto objects with an adhesive and because of this, when the object experiences even the slightest strain, it leads to a corresponding change in the measuring grid and thus the deformation can be detected. We know that when we apply force in an object, the object experiences stress and because of this applied force, deformation is caused in the body. While stress is the force per unit area, strain is the displacement or deformation caused in an object due to stress. Therefore, when we apply force on a body, it leads to a change in the length of the object. The object undergoes either compression or elongation. Since this strain gauge is pasted onto the object, whenever the object undergoes deformation, the measuring grids in the strain gauge also change their shape, which leads to a change in the strain gauge's resistance. This change in resistance is due to the relation R equals L by A for a conductor. This change in resistance can be calculated by using a setup which is discussed further. If R is the original resistance of the strain gauge, then strain is given by the ratio of change in resistance to the original resistance of the strain gauge. Here epsilon is the strain to be calculated and G is the gauge factor. Gauge factor is defined as the ratio of relative change in electrical resistance to mechanical strain. In real life, the change in resistance is small and can only be measured with the help of a Wheatstone bridge. The Wheatstone bridge has four arms with one resistor on each arm. The resistor in one of the arms is replaced with a strain gauge. A change in resistance will lead to a change in voltage and hence the strain will be calculated. When an object is subjected to a force, it can experience either tensile or compressive strain. These changes occur within the limit of elasticity. Now, when a strain gauge is placed on the object and the object undergoes tensile strain, there is an elongation in the object which is quantified by a positive change in resistance. Now, when the object is subjected to compressive strain, it shows a negative change in resistance. Thus, they can be used to detect both expansion and compression of the object. Strain gauges are very important in the geotechnical field. They are constantly used to monitor bridges, dams, power plants, etc. for overloading. A constant check on these structures is essential to avoid any fatal accidents. They are also used to measure the force required to rotate an object in motors, wheels and propellers. They are also fixed to structural load-bearing components along load paths of airplanes to detect wing deflection. Strain gauges have the following advantages. They are highly precise, they are small and inexpensive, and they have no moving parts and hence they do not undergo any wear within the limit of elasticity. Strain gauges, however, also have some disadvantages. They are non-linear in nature. This means that after crossing their limit of elasticity, the metal can fracture. They are sensitive to temperature and they need to be regularly calibrated. That's all about strain gauges, guys. See you in the next one. Until then, bye.